author of Who Killed Creativity, Andrew Brown, to stop by the studio today. Here is what he had to say. What's happened is everyone now realizes that quality of productiveness is important, so that you need that to get just to the starting line. Now what's important is innovation. And so it's the companies that can build a culture of innovation that can actually move forward. Actually, there's design thinking sessions, helping companies solve critical problems or difficult problems. And we just kept coming up against this barrier. These participants would come to our workshops or our sessions and we'd be all excited to teach them something creative and, and, and not artistic. I mean, you know, solving a real issue. But every single one of them would often be pushed by their boss to come. And the first thing they'd say is, it's not my responsibility to be creative. Why am I here? That's the innovation department or that's someone else. Uh, and, and here we are trying to get them to think creatively and trying to get them to feel creative. And yet they always came with excuses. And we thought, well, unless we can you know, deal with these excuses, every book in the world won't help them become creative. You know, where you are on the scale, a lot of companies are saying the issue is now actually the implementation of the innovation. Totally impressed. It's it's logical. There is a neuroscience behind it. It's not only fun. There is a lot of lot of real facts in it. Overly imaginative and overly loaded with tools and ideas. Because we put it into the context of innovation and the company as such, it makes it first more credible. It makes it more actionable for us. It was the best training engagement program we've ever had. Great workshop, great learning experience, and one that I think you ought to take advantage of truly exceptional for our team. They come to me afterwards and I say, you gonna do any change? Like, nah, he'll be gone in two years. Let him do what he likes. So for 20 years, the hotel stays the same because the mentality is, it's just moving too fast. I just can't keep up. There is a clock that is getting faster and faster. And the only way we can keep up with that clock getting faster and faster is to innovate faster and faster. It's just you and me, just you and me. They don't exist. Okay? It's what a magician does. While a magician is getting you to focus on one thing, they are doing something else. So I'm... <laughs> you know what? I've got to do this two more times today, and if I'm sick, you can take over. Because I think you are... Except you, I, need, I need you need to, to face this way, yeah. because you've got to put it in this exactly. here so they can't see it. <laughs> this is magic. This is magic. <laughs> Thank you. Surf, but on a reef break with coral reef underneath it, the wave picked me up and threw me headfirst into the reef. When I came up, I put my hand in my head and I discovered a hole about that big. When you have an accident like I had, every single neuron in my brain that was alive and awake and functioning moved across to the old part of the brain to try and say, Andrew, fight or flight, you must survive. Most of us spend most of our time in the workplace functioning on the reptilian part of our brain. Addiction to your email can be actually lower your IQ more than smoking marijuana. <laughs> Do you smoke marijuana? <laughs> but stress, come on in. It's cool to hang out with stress. It's cool to say, how are you today? I'm busy, here's my friend stress. <laughs> come and hang out with me. But I believe that when all these things are left to fester in an organisation and they're not dealt with, and we're not able to profile them, and we're not able to hear those voices and, and spot them when they're coming, then creativity will not be able to flourish.